go before we begin with anything. Uh, who here saw last night's Saturday Night Live, the at home edition season finale? Oh, I've been I refusing to watch. Yeah, I've been no. refusing to watch any Saturday Night Live while in quarantine. Because? Uh, because I hate quarantine edition versions of anything. Okay. You can't support the artists as they try so hard from their fingers, their um, uh, table setting areas. Um, I'll support uh, their previous works. Okay. <laughs> you mean in front of a live studio audience somewhere? I can. Uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I can get. Pass. I can get behind this. Uh, I can get behind this attitude because if you'd saw, if you'd seen the first one they did, which was a fucking train wreck, yeah, I could see why you would never come back. The next two, however, were much higher value in production, and there's one in particular I think I think you're going to want to check out. By the way, this is TV Tan Podcast episode zero three one nine, and uh, I'm Bill Frost here at Command Central. I'm- and I'm uh, Tommy Milagro, broadcasting from a cardboard bunker somewhere. And uh, uh, that other voice you just heard, ladies and gentlemen, is, uh, if you will care to introduce yourself, special guest star. Oh, uh, what up? Uh, I'm Rebecca Frost in my own uh, special cla- ca- castle in my own special cloud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like we're talking to you in the same room. <laughs> it's, it's like there's not even a difference. Yeah, this nope. is a uh, this is the same Rebecca of Geek Show podcast. You're still on that, right? Uh huh. Yeah, still, we're still doing that weekly. Still doing that. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and uh, uh, also, uh, she's also part of a uh, Hello Sweetie podcast. Is that still going? Oh, uh, that's a long story for another time. <laughs> Point taken. All right. <laughs> We'll save that for. We haven't talked in a while. We'll save for. We'll save that for our dark side of the podcast uh, series. Save that for the Patreon. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Well, well, we do have to uh, drum up uh, more listeners as well uh, budget because. Uh, yeah. Well, reasons, I, I like to. Revenue- ad- I like to attribute the dropping numbers, uh, dropping podcast numbers. Because one, I read in general that podcast numbers are down for everybody. I don't know if that's true, but I also would it's, like. You know what? Is that like, true? I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't look at numbers for my podcast ever, but I know me personally since I've been trapped at home and like not commuting and not like getting ready for work as often as I used to. Uh, my podcast listening has dropped dramatically. There you go. Yeah, mine too. Uh, or maybe just our listeners. Uh, maybe maybe a lot of them were protesters who went out and got killed. Well, we do. Uh, uh, we do. Uh, say, we do appeal to a very right wing demographic. Uh, uh, well, we are uh, in the Alex Jones fan base somehow. Um, <laughs> now we managed to get that Infowars uh, demographics. I'm not doing my impression. I don't want to hurt my throat. But uh, we are brought no. to you this week by a uh, plethora of sponsors. Uh, I think we got three of them going. What are you drinking, Tommy? Yes. All right. Well, let's start with our. Op- Official sponsor that would be uh, from Ogden's own distillery, the uh, purveyors of the Five Lives Heaven vodka, which I have managed to uh, pair up uh, with La Croix Limoncello. Uh, it's La Croix. It runs with enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that is that it now? Is, so uh, that's my yeah. husband. So I the- learned that from the official La Croix Twitter. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, so that is what, like lemon vanilla? Yes. Okay. And I have to say, uh, the LaCroix, thank you, uh, brings me such joy into my mouth and gets me through these quarantine times. And uh, Rebecca's drinking a Manhattan, I hear? Uh, yes, yes, wink, wink. Um, Radio I, theater. Uh, <laughs> took a... Uh, a Manhattan class from the, the Wine Academy of Utah, Jimmy Santangelo. Mm. And uh, so the class was also sponsored by Sugar House Distillery, so we used only Sugar House Distillery products. Okay. Oh, you mean our other OG sponsor of the TV Fan Podcast? Why, yes. Yeah, and I'm Why? drinking I'm drinking a Bohemian beer because I got a oh. bunch of it. Our other, <laughs> one of our other sponsors. Uh, you, you, uh, you're, uh, you've been beer hoarding is what you're saying there. I, I'm a fan of the Cerveza. Quite enjoy it. Mm. 
I had some uh, over Cinco uh, de Drunco the, the other weekend. Yeah, so That's the only way I'm going to get through. So getting back to the Saturday Night Live, uh, Rebecca, there's one segment in particular I think you're going to want to look up. It was uh, from is it last. The cat, is it the Cat Lady sketch? Not that one. No. Okay. <laughs> this is what this is a uh, is called the I think it's under the, under the title Master Class. And uh, it has uh, Chloe, Chloe Feynman doing a very uh, excellent uh, Phoebe Waller bridge impersonation. But oh, no. but the best part of it is Melissa Villasenor doing John Mulaney. I saw her post that on Twitter, and I just absolutely love Melissa Villasenor so much. And the, that's one of the bummers about this the whole thing. One of the bummers is her tour got. Fun, yes, so, she whatever. was supposed to be coming here to Wise Guys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in June, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, there's still some time. Yeah, but look, look <laughs> that segment up because she is absolutely fantastic as John Mulaney. So good that I think she should actually just replace John Mulaney, and we just get rid of him and let her let her take over the role of John Mulaney in actual life. Well, that's can, a bold statement. <laughs> can it truly be said, though, uh, Bill, that uh, the initials SNL can finally stand uh, instead of Saturday Night Live. They can now be so now Latina. Yeah, one. They, they got <laughs> yeah, one. They have the one. <laughs> and uh, speaking of uh, Saturday Night Live alums, uh, this one dropped last week uh, completely. It one got by me from Comedy Central. Have you heard of Robbie? I um, have not. I'll, I'll take R-O-B-B-Y? that. R O B B Y. Yeah, so the guy's name is a st- uh, starring uh, Rory Scovel. He's a comedian, comic actor. You would recognize him if you saw him. And he okay. he, he plays a small town small town guy who's a whose ultimate dream is to become the high school basketball coach. But right now he's stuck coaching tiny tot church ball league. And oh, it, right and of course he works at an ice cream shop that was founded by the KKK. This is a, this is a in Georgia, by the way, and uh, of course his his ex girlfriend is Sashir Zamata, and uh, oh nice found out, fi- come to find out they have a kid together that she finally got around to telling him about it ten years later, and uh, Bo Bridges is also in here as his father, and it's really funny. It's got some uh, serious eastbound and down energy to it, just a little more low key. But uh, I would recommend checking that out on Comedy Central. They drop the whole thing. You can binge the whole thing because it's available on demand. So Robbie can uh, say that they're uh, now uh, 80% less uh, Danny McBride? <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> there will never be another Danny McBride. But the, the, you'll, but if you, you make it sound like he died. <laughs> yeah. Well, Just pour one out for Danny McBride. And, and uh, uh, to that point, Rebecca, maybe give it uh, three weeks, uh, depending if he uh, decides to uh, go out and mingle with people. So, we'll so uh, what are what are you watching uh, in lockdown, Rebecca? Um, so uh, Harley Quinn. I'm going to talk about Harley Quinn until the day I die. Uh, with you um, there, yes. The not this most recent episode, but the episode before that, the one um, Batman. Backman, I think is the name of the episode. <laughs> yes, is probably one of the best episodes of cartoon television I've seen, and I think it's my favorite episode of the Harley Quinn series. And it, she's not even in it. Yeah, that's that's kind um, of kind of weird that she's barely in that one. Uh, yeah, she's not in that episode at all. But at I think all, it's one of like the best episodes of <laughs> Harley Quinn. Um, yeah, Harley Quinn has my favorite Bane of all time. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I also just started Never Have I Ever on Netflix. I think we have like one or two more episodes left. Yes. Um, It's so sweet. And I know I've been dreading saying this because I know they're not the same country, but this is the Ms. Marvel TV show that I want to see. You know? Um, Oh. I've heard that. I I think I read that somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I know, I know they're totally, you know, they're not the same country and they're not the same culture, but... It's very much within the same vibe of I would love to see a Ms. Marvel TV show that, you know, it features a normal girl, you know, a normal Asian girl trying to find her way in, you know, today's America. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that uh, that show from uh, Mindy Kaling. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, the the girl, I can't remember her name, who plays uh, Davy. Davy, yeah. yeah her, I have her, no idea what her name is. 
Her I previous acting it. experience was uh, high school theater. This is her Shout first out. her first real thing. She's crushing it. She has such great comedic timing. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anything else you're watching? Anything you started and decided, no, I'm out after you tried it? Um, oof. That's a good question. Oh, Venture Brothers? I started Venture Brothers for the first time. Oh, be still oh. my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it finally yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah, I finally started Venture Brothers because my friends kept here pressuring me into it. And I can't express enough without underselling it just how much I love Dr. Girlfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With dead voice. <laughs> yeah. Sweetie, yeah. isn't that the thing from the best mode? <laughs> yeah, the Venture Brothers, there's a there's a lot of that to get through, too. Yeah, yeah, I've learned that. Uh, because, <laughs> because I want to keep watching it, um, but I have to watch it with my friends. We kind of watch it as a group. Um, like, we'll put it on and then we'll chat with each other as it's on. And it's kind of a fun way to hang out during the quarantine time. And is it a whole lot of like, wait a minute, what the hell's going on here? Who is that? What does this refer to? No, not at all. Really? There's there as yeah. as you get further into the into the the show, there's a lot of seasons and a lot of stuff to remember. <laughs> it gets pretty deep after a while. No, I've, it's been good because my friends that I'm watching it, they've already seen it and they're also obsessed with it. Yeah. So they are good at being like, oh, pay attention to this. Here's what this is. Blah, blah. It's like watching it with a commentary track. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bigger question. Uh, please tell me you're not Zoom meeting uh, while you're doing ventures. No, no. What's actually very funny is uh, we haven't been using Zoom. We've just been using Skype, like a couple of old, like a bunch of old people. <laughs> and <laughs> we, uh, there was one night we, after we've been playing this role playing game, um, and so uh, one night. We actually got started late, and we wound up not playing just because we hadn't seen other people in so long. So we just wound up shooting the shit and playing Animal Crossing via Skype with each other. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> and then I was like, "Well, we should watch Retro Brothers," and they suggested, "Oh, we should like let do we put it on and keep on the video chat?" And I was like, "I can only do like two things at once, so <laughs> one of these items has to go." <laughs> Multitasking, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the show I started, I'd been curious about for a couple of years. I said, okay, well, now's my chance. I'm going to check it out. Uh, Manifest on NBC. We've talked about it here a couple of times. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, does, it get, does it get any better? I dropped off after, I think, halfway through the first season. I made it all the way through the first season, and I'm questioning whether to continue. I don't think I will. Uh, how Jesus-y <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's a little too Jesus-y. <laughs> uh, oh, that's the problem. You, you can only go half Jesus, but never go full Jesus. Yeah, you Je- never go learn. full Jesus. Jesus ruins never a lot of shows. Jesus. Unless it's black Jesus, then then he's totally fine. But <laughs> Oh, wait, that, that that's a good point. Is it uh, white Jesus, black Jesus, or is it just Jesus? It's just boring Jesus is what it is. Oh, boring oh, Jesus. Some Mormon, some Mormon Jesus. Okay, you could have... The Mormon that, Jesus, that, yeah. That explains a lot. And uh, the one of the shows I'm watching right now on Showtime, uh, Penny Dreadful, City of Angels. It's uh, how is that? It's so so far so good. It's a little weird. Uh, Natalie Dormer is fucking fantastic because she plays a shape shifting demon, so she gets to play two to three characters per episode. I saw, yeah, I saw like a behind the scenes thing where she talks about her like three different characters. I think and there's more looks- than that. <laughs> It looks interesting, but I had trouble trying to like find the connection between this Penny Dreadful and the previous one. It's pretty much in name only. This is mm. this is set in uh, the original one was set in Victorian London. This one it is in nineteen thirty eight Los Angeles, and it's pretty much just in name only is the relation. So you don't need one to see the other, but it's uh, mm. it's got a lot of uh, uh, Santa Muerte symbolism. And also, you've got the rise of evangelists and also Nazis, because apparently every show has to have Nazis now. But, mm-hmm. Tommy, our good friend Gustavo Arlano, oh, he, he's I'm not okay. happy with this show. Uh, Gustavo was the guy who used to write uh, the Ask a Mexican column in newspapers, and he also did the Fox uh, animated series Border Town. And now he's a reporter for the um, L.A. Times. L.A. Times. Yeah. Yeah. But... uh 
Here, here he is on Twitter. This started a whole thread. Um, Penny Dreadful, the L.A. Mexican version of Penny Dreadful, has so many historical anachronisms as to be laughable. Taco stands? They weren't around in 1938. Santa Muerte is the focus of the Day of the Dead? Nope. More Hollywood bullshit <laughs> when it comes to Mexicans. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh... Oh, you know what? Have you been watching? I saw the trailer for this. I haven't had the, the patience to sit down and start it yet. Have you started Hollywood on Netflix? I tried to. It's not good. Its intentions are good. So it's a good idea. It's a good idea. A uh, little, maybe a little too much Ryan, on the Ryan Murphy side. Uh, Gustavo here. Gustavo also had a problem with that show where he said, "Oh, <laughs> you, you, Gustavo doesn't like TV." Yeah, he's good. No, 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 no. no uh, let me uh, uh, let me uh, speak. Uh, brown person, white girl. No, see. Uh, <laughs> Gustavo Ariano has no problem uh, with TV. He, he just has a problem with TV that kind of goes into stereotypes. We've kind of had enough of that. And plus, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb here and say Chico and the man is probably going to grade him a bit. But if you want, uh, I, I'll uh, reach out to our uh, producer, uh, La Chai Girl, and see if uh, uh, he can uh, partake of this uh, gentle cabron. And ask him, what TV do you want? <laughs> but uh, watch more. Of? He's a he's a he's a big advocate for tacos. But his problem with Hollywood was like, okay, I see you're doing a revisionist history in uh, with with great good intentions, uh, representing gay people and uh, Asian Americans. But he says, where are the Mexicans? I don't see no Mexicans in your show. So mm. he, he, he's. He's a he's a one issue kind of well two issues uh, Mexican representation <laughs> and tacos, uh, those are his his main things. But being being so a, being, a, sh- being a gringo, I didn't I didn't notice all of the inaccuracies in Penny Dreadful City of Angels. I'm still going to watch it. Yes, and uh, being uh, uh, being half Mexican, I didn't care for Hollywood. I'm not going to break my neck to watch it anytime soon. So I'm good. Um, <laughs> but uh, I. Uh, I uh, I did do this uh, the other day. I uh, speaking of uh, things we've been binging. Uh, I finally saw season four of Veronica Mars on Hulu. Ooh. So I am oh I I was very blown away how well that was. I know you talked about it before. I finally yeah. caught up to it. And um, right now it's like that. I, I I and I tried doing Peaky Blinders and I went. No, nah, I'm good. I'm. Oh, I'm, uh, you don't fuck with the Peaky Blinders. <laughs> yeah i did uh, i did uh i did uh blast through the entire second season of dead to me on netflix fantastic show but there is so much crying so mm-hmm. much crying it's got to be the so most much de- crying the got to be the most dehydrated show on tv <laughs> but i still recommend it oh well all right well, we'll this uh, is maybe, james uh, james marsden's time to shine in season two of dead to me are he in so, that show yes playing two different roles oh yeah. What is it with all these actors doing two or more roles? What in the name of Tatiana Mosley is going on here? What in the name of Orphan Black? (laughs) Mosley is her name. Oh, thank you. That's a Priyanka. That's a Priyanka Chopra moment. To get in. (laughs) Uh, Tommy's first take on Priyanka Chopra's name was Pranka Chopra, so he's getting better. Oh, oh boy. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm only uh, halfway into the. into the heavenly vodka here, so progress. Yeah. So as I'll be talking about on the morning zoo tomorrow, uh, there's some new show- shows coming up this week. Uh, one of them uh, Monday on the Food Network. Uh, I'm not sure what to think of this one. Amy Schumer learns to cook. Oh, that's okay. like a real opp- missed opportunity for me. <laughs> this could have been your show. This could have been my show. She's she is of course married to award-winning chef Chris Fisher. And so in quarantine, they're shooting this show for the Food Network about Amy Schumer, Schumer learns how to cook. Okay. Cue the trolls. Um, it, <laughs> is this the show that's going to break up the marriage? I'm curious. Could be, yeah. If that, uh, if that Jeffrey Dean Morgan show doesn't do it for him. Have you seen that? At home with the Mo- Friday uh, night with the Morgans? Well, I'm oh. sorry, what? Jeffrey Dean Morgan and his wife. Uh, do Zoom chats with their various celebrity pals from their ranch in upstate New York. God, of course. And every once in a while you get to take a little tour of the ranch and see see the critters. It's like real-life Animal Crossing. 
No, not at all. Like, he's never played Animal Crossing, obviously. Nope. Oh, come on now. Uh, play along for the audience. You know, <laughs> the half of our dozen <laughs> listeners that are still tuning in. That's Rebecca. Come on. <laughs> So that's on that's on Monday. On Tuesday, there's a uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt special. It is. Uh, oh, I saw this. It's like Bandersnatch. Yeah, it's uh, interactive. Uh, Kimmy versus the Reverend. So John Hamm. Oh. Her uh, so Ellie. We... Kimmy is about to get married to uh, Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> but uh, but but a nefarious plan on the on the part of the Reverend. It seems like he's got another uh, uh, secret pod of women out there somewhere so ellie kemper is uh she either has to go forward with her, her wedding or track down and uh find these other captive women and of course it's got it's interactive like bandersnatch where he said hey do we plan the wedding one or make out two decisions you, decisions choose that your own adventure people. choose your own right. adventure <laughs> right multitasking as you pointed out <laughs> and uh of course, coming up on Sunday, Snowpiercer, the series. Really? Yeah, no uh, no Chris Evans, sorry. No, I know, but I've been so excited for the series. They've uh, It's been in production for four years. The whole thing has been completed sitting on a shelf since January of 2019 because they weren't sure what to do with it, or and they've gone through like three or four different showrunners, and it, they finally finished it, and now it's just been sitting around for over a year. And it's finally going to premiere can Sunday. We, can we just call uh, uh, Snowpiercer for what it is? Quarantining colon train level edition? <laughs> Why are we on a plane, Rick? Oh. <laughs> uh, listen, that last episode of Rick and Morty? <sighs> <laughs> I only liked one part, and you I'll give you 20 seconds to guess which part it was. Oh, I've already forgotten it. What is it? Oh, it's the, the, the part where um, Rick tries to get Morty to tell a story that will pass the Bechdel test. <laughs> yeah. What? So, yeah, it's. Have, do, you, do you not watch Rick and Morty? I uh, haven't uh, seen the fourth season recently, no. Okay, uh, well, so I'm not even going to begin to even bother to explain to you the premise of the most recent episode um, as of when you're recording this, but. Um, Rick has, tries to explain to Morty what the Bechdel test is because he's like, you don't know what the Bechdel test is where are they keeping you in that school and you know, if you have listeners who don't know what it is, basically any story or like uh, movie TV, comic book, whatever that has a conversation between two women that talking about any talking about something other than a man, that means it passes the Bechdel test um, oh. so so Morty tries to have Morty tries to tell a story involving his mother and Summer um, talking about the only other thing he knows about women uh, besides men. Uh, so he has them talking about their period. And uh, <laughs> now I, re- I remember the scene now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and so it devolves into them going outside and fighting girl scorpions. You know, the girl scorpions with their bows on their heads. Uh, with their magic powers, which they shoot rainbows out of their vaginas during their special time. Uh, and then Ruthader <laughs> Ginsburg calls and says, I'm that Supreme Court lady, and you fucking did it. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, and that's the only good part of that episode. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, excellent. so this, this version of Snowpiercer is a 10-episode series. Uh, you, you got a train circling the Earth because they tried to fix uh, global warming and they turned the planet into an ice ball, so they, they have to travel. Uh, perpetually, they've now been traveling for six years on a uh, train track that circles the world. Uh, uh, Jennifer Connelly is taking over the Tilda Swinton role here. And uh, the, the other star of the show is David Diggs. From uh, Hamilton. Yeah, this movie is so good. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it looks pretty fantastic. It's, uh, just glad that it's finally out there because it's been for fucking ever. They've been trying to get this put on somewhere. Well, now they've got a captive audience that'll really watch it. Oh, so. yeah. Well, and it's so weird to me that it wasn't picked up like even in January because the movie was directed by um, the same guy who directed Parasite. Yeah, you could have capitalized so, on like, that. Yeah, why not? Oh, oh TNT. movies and TV, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've been uh, keeping up on my Dark Side of the Ring uh, series Ooh. on Vice, 
which uh, I'm giving you a segue here. The last episode was about the, um, uh, what was it called? The U... Uh, UWF, Universal, UWF, uh, a, a wrestling, wrestling federation that I'd yeah. never even heard of before. But apparently, this guy with piles of money and cocaine tried to launch his own competitor to uh, to the WWF in the very early '90s, and it didn't end well. Yeah, but uh, you know, to be fair, uh, it's it was uh, the late '80s transitioning to the '90s. So imagine if the dude really got into heroin. <laughs> That would have been a different story. Um, All right, we're, we're going to hit the sports report. Okay, in that case, uh, please go ahead and hit the music. And sports, so Tommy Milagro, go team. From the sports desk of TV Sam Podcast, uh, we are delivering to you the sport of pro wrestling from the bunker. Uh, well, from the cardboard box. But either way, uh, so a couple of things to uh, just jump into right away as... As we're recording live on air, this whole recording thing that Rebecca said, so cute. Um, we should point out that there has been so much going on, starting with uh, AEW uh, return back to live television. They are now uh, uh, they are now showing their matches in Jacksonville, uh, which is where Tony Khan, the owner of uh, AEW is uh, based because of the Jacksonville Jaguars and because Florida de- uh, deemed that uh, wrestlers are now essential workers. I mean, it's not like he got a buttload of money to make that decision. Thank you, uh, Vince McMahon. Anyway, uh, and let's see. Also, uh, the other thing to bring up here on NWA, uh, yes, the National Wrestling Alliance will be showing uh, this Tuesday... On superpower, see Rebecca. There's three R's in there. That's why the uh, the extra R's. In there. Cool. Um, <laughs> oh, it right, was that cool. Uh, mm-hmm. he, they are going to show uh, the uh, the match that was supposed to happen, where the NWA's uh, super faction of Strictly Business faces off against Red Badge of Courage, Ring of Honor's villain enterprises. Into a super matchup there. Is that an and LLC? Be headed by. What's that? Is a villain enterprises an LL- LLC? Uh, they're they're mainly. Uh, I, I think it's more of a uh, uh, more of an incorporated uh, sort of thing there. Oh, okay. So yeah, uh, I'll, yeah. But uh, then again, I, I I I it's a little hard to get in too nuanced into it, uh, even for someone like me who has an MBA. Oh, did I mention I have an MBA, folks? In wrestling. Oh, take a drink. <laughs> Thank you for playing along, Rebecca. It's yeah. been a while. <laughs> all right. And uh, now let's uh, dive right into all things uh, WWE here, uh, whether you like it or not. I'll leave the latter. And it's going to be uh, well, a couple of things to bring up here. Uh, as we were recording live on air, WWE just recently held, in time for Mother's Day, the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which was broadcasted from WWE headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut. And, uh, of course, you can still catch the replay of uh, the Money in the Bank on the WWE Network, which is only available for nine ninety nine. Not sponsor. Well, time to drink up, bitches. And uh, the biggest announcement to come out of there, other than the fact that, uh, uh, well... Uh, uh, the biggest news to come out of there is that the Money in the Bank uh, uh, match winners for the women uh, was Asuka, who claimed the uh, briefcase. So now Asuka has the, uh, has the opportunity in the next year or so to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase for a title. But the biggest surprise of all uh, is that for the men. Uh, division, Otis, uh, one half of the tag team Heavy Machinery, got the men's Money in the Bank briefcase. And in case if you're wondering uh, what is uh, what does Otis look like, the easiest word picture I can explain is this. Imagine a human cannonball of a man with a beard who is able to do, and I kid you not, folks, he's able to do the breakdancing, the worm, 
uh, managed to capture that brief. So that is the biggest surprise of the entire uh, matchup right there. But I'll let you uh, determine that. But also, bigger uh, news here is that on uh, WWE Network, uh, and it's going to be available uh, after, uh, not just after uh, Money in the Bank, but also uh, after, uh, are you still there, Bill? Yes, still here. Okay, uh, looks like I lost uh, Rebecca here. No, I'm still I'm still here. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. I don't have anything to contribute to your sports talk. We're we're both wrapped <laughs> with attention. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, for a second there, I thought I lost you there. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no, we're just bored. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. well, that's <laughs> it. No, you're not. Burn. I, I know that. Uh, no, I am. That's all, almost as bad as what I used to do here, where I'd make the sound of fast forwarding during the sports report. Doing, I kind of missed that a little bit here. Uh, shoot, where was I? Oh, yeah. So on the WWE Network, uh, they are going to be showing a five-part series of The Undertaker, The Last Ride. Basically, it's documenting Undertaker's last match at WrestleMania, uh, where he faced off against Roman Reigns, uh, to his uh, hip replacement surgery, to his comeback to the ring to make a... Weird boneyard match uh, filming uh, uh, match. So is this their answer this to week? the uh, the Michael Jordan series? Well, uh, unlike uh, the Michael Jordan series, you won't hear about the Utah Jazz getting uh, uh, pushed off for the win. So there's <laughs> that uh, uh, beautiful part there. Oh. I don't know why we needed that Michael Jordan series. I mean, everything is in Space Jam. You just have to watch that. Yeah, exactly. isn't Space Jam the documentary? Yeah, the documentary well, Space Jam. Now that's... Yeah, and that's true sports right there. Not this uh, ESPN, uh, the last dance. Yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, speaking of Roman Reigns there, uh, he has not been on WWE programming uh, for a while. Ever since uh, the coronavirus, he took himself away. And part of it is because he is um, uh, immune compromised since his recent battle with leukemia. But uh, according to the news, TMZ, uh, he spoke with Harvey Levin and Cuff and said, uh, yeah, he's away, but it's not just because of the leukemia, which would have been fine because I guess his uh, his medication that he's taking uh, would have would have stopped the coronavirus, not to mention, you know, his Superman punch. But no, he is uh, uh, his uh, family just recently had twins and he's staying at home so that he can keep his family, especially his newborn, safe. Now, if that doesn't just inspire your heart with joy, uh, then you're Carol Baskin. And finally this... Carol Baskin didn't do anything wrong. (laughs) That's right. You you just uh, keep telling yourself that. Whatever helps you tonight there, Rebecca. Well, finally this. uh, I think this is the only... uh, Well, actually, stories I'm going to end on. Uh, just before we went live on air, it was uh, reported uh, that uh, Alberto Del Rio. Oh, I saw this. Oh no, he's a, he was in jail, um, according to uh, NBC News for San Antonio. Uh, Jose A. Rodriguez Tuchuan, uh, or Alberto Del Rio, uh, was uh, recently charged with sexual assault. And uh, it uh, goes on to say here that uh, he, uh, 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 that uh, Del Rio, you know, he used to be with the WWE and uh, serves for his MMA program, Combate Americas. Apparently, he uh, he slapped a woman around and uh, threatened to uh, uh, kick her, kick her cat out in the middle of nowhere. So he uh, he was arrested May 9th and released on fifty thousand dollar bond. Uh, after being charged with second-degree sexual assault felony. More on that story as that develops. But finally this, because we've got to end on a positive note. God, well, I hope so. On a positive note. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, we talked about podcasting for a bit. We have to turn now to one of our podcast brethren, uh, Colt Cabana, uh, recently signed of AEW. Uh, he also does the podcast, The Art of Wrestling, which he broadcasts out of his studio apartment in chicago illinois but recently uh 
he's out of work, and uh, as is a lot of other pro wrestlers, especially those that are on the independent scene. And he recently has been uh, recording this quarantine series. Uh, so he's, I, I think last week he did episodes one through five of the wrestlers that are out of work uh, due to the COVID uh, quarantining. And uh, this week, as we're recording live on air, he's going to be recording uh, episodes 6 through 10. Uh, and also, he uh, he mentions that uh, if you do listen to us, if you do also want to see the videos of these uh, interviews, uh, you could go on to Patreon, uh, support that way. And again, I bring this up. Oh, hold on a second. That was not what I was trying to do there. No. Um, sorry, I uh, hit something by accident. But I'm bringing this up because with uh, with all, if everybody else out of work, even though if you're not in Florida and not considered essential, however you can support artists and athletes like professional wrestlers, do what you can. Try to support them by buying their merchandise or uh, getting an 8x10. And they need this more than ever because one day we will need sports. And sports with Tommy Malagro. Go team. You know, it's funny. I see the, uh, uh, get these announcements from Facebook. They say, Hey, TV 10, you might be eligible for federal loans in these trying times. Oh, cool. <laughs> like, and I'm going, okay, when? sure. How, how can we gain the system? Yeah. I mean, Sponsored by the U S federal government. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And, uh, that reminds me, both, uh, we're, both we're of them, part of that. We're part of that shell corporation, uh, Ruth Chris, right? That's how we can get the money. <laughs> yeah, both. Uh, yeah, my my band got one too. It says, "Hey, your band might be a bit." <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll jump right on that. Uh, ridiculous. <laughs> so, if you were Rebecca, if you were to recommend uh, one thing that everyone should watch really hard or watch harder than they have maybe already, what would that one thing be? Oh heck, um. Hmm. Or or two things, or how many, however many you got. Well, okay, I'm going to go a little bit off the beaten path, because um, I also watch a ton of YouTube. Okay. Um, and there's this YouTube channel that I love called The Take. All right. And they do a ton of, like, informational videos and a lot of deconstruction videos of uh, tropes that you see on TV. Okay. So... Like today, for example, they released a video, and each of their videos are about 20 minutes long, uh, but the one that they released today in honor of Mother's Day is the bad mom trope, oh. where okay. they go a little bit more in depth and explain, you know, whatever tropes they're covering and what does it mean, you know, for us as viewers today and how has it evolved over time. Um, it's so fascinating to me, and I highly recommend it. And what was the name of that again? The channel is called The Take. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought that I recommend. Okay, cool. Um, one of mine, I, I made this last week, and I'll uh, reiterate it, uh, Fortitude on Amazon Prime Video, a uh, murder mystery set in uh, a small Norwegian town with uh, fantastic uh, scenery and a really twisty mystery that has some supernatural elements to it and Stanley Tucci. Oh! <laughs> yeah. And also, that's a selling point right there. Yeah, and also for the people who've been hearing us blab on and on about Harley Quinn for the last several months, and and you're and you're saying, you know, that sounds interesting, but I don't have the DC universe, and I'm not going to get it. Well, here's something for you. Sunday nights on the Sci Fi Channel, they've been uh, rerunning season one there. So if you have oh awesome, if you have basic cable, you can watch Harley Quinn on the Sci Fi Channel on Sunday nights. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which, uh, I don't know if that bodes well for the DC Universe, because they gave away Doom Patrol to HBO Max. Now they're kind of giving away Harley Quinn to sci-fi. Well, it's not that they're giving it away. Aren't they, like, partnering with HBO Max? I don't know about that. Uh, HBO yeah. Max, HBO mm-hmm. Max, yeah, they're owned by the same company, but sci-fi is not. They're mm-hmm. different companies. So, I don't know. Weird. But also, I would recommend uh, going to slugmag.com or billfrost.tv, whichever gets you there quicker. It'll be billfrost.tv, easily. <laughs> uh, this this month's content shifter about streaming TVs, uh, 13 dumb comedies for dumb times. Uh, I know some, I know there, there are certain people out there who aren't, aren't, a fa- aren't fans of the phrase, turn your brain off, but come the fuck on. Let's do it. <laughs> 
Uh, I've, I've listed a bunch of series here like Alone Together on Hulu, which was a freeform series, which is hilarious. Uh, Dave on FXX, also on Hulu. Oh, I love Lil Dicky. <laughs> did, you, did you see the series, Dave? No, not yet. It's really... At first, I, I, I was skeptical. It basically screamed in neon, this show is not for you. But as I got into it, I was like, <laughs> as I got into it, I was like, oh, this is great. It totally works. And uh, Aquafina is Nora from Queens on Comedy Central as well, which was really funny. It's basically, she's, she's basically Broad City wrapped into one. And it's really funny. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, What We Do in the Shadows, that's a given. Uh, yes. Documentary Now from IFC, Bill Hader and Fred Armisen. Fantastic comedy. And... Uh, there's another one called uh, Bruise. Bru- we talked about this a few weeks ago on the podcast. Bruise Brothers on Netflix. It's from the people who did the League, and it's about a pair of oh, brothers, yeah. pair of brothers running a brew pub at Van Nuys. It's got it's got that kind of League comedy. It's not as good as the League, but it's got the it's got got that kind of vibe to it. Uh, they came up with the Hefeweizen and, and unwittingly named it the uh, Vice Power, which was <laughs> not, not good. And, uh, yeah, so go to BillFrost.tv or SlugMag.com and read all about it. And, uh, Tommy, what what do you recommend people watch hard? Well, uh, let's see. I just uh, finished watching up uh, Westworld on uh, HBO. Okay. Uh, uh, season three, uh, which was twisty as fuck. Yes. Uh, but it had Aaron Paul, so good time to uh, maybe binge uh, seasons one through three there. I'm also going to say run is definitely something people need to watch a lot more of. With, I cannot um, Merit, recommend this. Merritt Weaver, kind of a romantic oh, comedy. Gleason. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but let's see. And then, uh, let's see. I already uh, recommended Veronica Mars. Uh, watch seasons one through four. Even the movie uh, on Hulu is how you can uh, get a hold of that. And I'm also going to say... You know what? Because uh, I got uh, basically a lot of time on my fucking hands. Um, I'm going to say Doom Patrol. Uh, that's going to be my next uh, uh, binge-tastic moment there. Love Doom Patrol. Yeah, it's very good. All right. And, That'll uh, be uh, before the crisis hit. There, yeah. So. Uh, for my uh, 80s movie revisitation series, uh, last night I uh, rewatched for the first time since 1985 Iron Eagle. Oh. Starring uh, Louis Gossett Jr. and uh, Jason Gedrick, it's basically a Top Gun ripoff about a uh, a hot shot in the uh, Air Force Academy whose uh, father, who's also a pilot, gets captured behind enemy lines in some uh, uh, generic uh, made up Arab state. And oh, uh, isn't this that Brian Griffin book? <laughs> 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 yeah, yes, it is. And uh, it's so fucking ridiculous. But, you know, uh, the kid, he can only fly. He can only fly like a pro. He can only he can only really kill it uh, when he's listening, jamming his tunes on his uh, Walkman. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Now. So you, you bring and in it- you bring in the killer 80s soundtrack. And uh, literally, he refers to this place that has captured his dad. Wait for it. As a shithole country. Mm, yikes. Yeah, so uh, Trumpy the Clown didn't originate that phrase. He stole it from Iron Eagle. Uh, and of course, they fly, of course they fly a couple of F-16s across the fucking Atlantic from Colorado or wherever they are to go get Dad and blow up a lot of brown people. Well, yeah, <laughs> because that's how much fuel those F-16s can hold. What a it's fucking science. terrible movie. And I, oh. I rewatched it. Oh my god. Anyway, that's it for this week. This has been episode zero three one nine of the TV Tan Podcast. I want to thank Rebecca Frost. Where can people find your stuff if you have stuff you want them to be directed to? Uh well, the quickest way to find all of my stuff is e is one of three options. Uh Rebecca S. Frost dot com, uh not Taylor Smith dot com or Chris Evans please bone me dot com. Okay. <laughs> N- nail down all those URLs, huh? I sure did. <laughs> I only nice. I only bought one, like a sucker. You got to invest in URLs. <laughs> and uh, I know Tommy doesn't have anything coming up to promote. Uh, <laughs> nope. Um, maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe you'll see me wander around uh, Central uh, Salt Lake somewhere, uh, trying to reenact that scene from I Am Legend. <laughs> um, okay. That's 
that's about as uh, far as it's ever going to get at this point. Um, I don't know. All right. That's how you can uh, catch me anywhere. Yeah, reach out to us on uh, the Facebook, the Twitter, and the Gmail, All TV Tan Podcast. Uh, Tell, tell us what you're watching, what you're not watching, what you shouldn't be watching, or just, just yell at us, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do, do it. So say goodnight, America. Good night, America. America. <laughs> oh, and uh, Rebecca, can you help jiggle that handle? Because it's time to flush. Oh. Hey,